Hi, I'm functional health coach Vince Pitstick, and this is MMU Education. Hey, if you would like to support the channel and love this content, please like and subscribe, and then also hit that notification bell to be notified every time we make a video drop. Thanks. What if I told you insulin was the key to burning fat and fat metabolism and not just the key to fat gain? So this is a nuanced and complex topic, and no one wants to hear that. What you want to hear is the catch line, the hook, <gasps> something's going to grip you, and then you want the immediate answer. Problem, solution. Insulin, bad. Get it down right? We don't want, me don't want insulin, right? And then, and then you go off and you make sure that you, any food or anything you do suppresses insulin, right? And that's what a lot of these carnivore people would have you believe. And just most people in general, they're going to go, glucose bad, insulin bad, meat good. <laughs> and, and that's how they look at us, unfortunately, the, the modern consumer, because, well, they know they can manipulate you with fear. And then some people are just too ignorant to know the difference. I know that there are many people that I've worked with clinically that come in with misinformed beliefs based on what works for them for a temporary period of time. And yes, going low carbohydrate diets, reducing your glucose levels that will inevitably reduce your insulin levels, which all weight loss does, um, is something that is good for you for a tire. But actually, there is a huge amount of women that have been over-dieting, over-stressed, and their insulin is too low, and now they can't burn fat. So what is it? Insulin too low, insulin too high. What do I need to do, Vince? I don't know how to live my life unless you tell me. Well, insulin, we have to understand what it does, right? And, and we have to understand what glucose does and how it actually affects fat metabolism. If we understand it a little bit more, we won't get manipulated so much, but we can harness the power of insulin and all of its fat giving benefits versus on the unfortunate side, if we allow insulin to get too high, some of the negative connotations or consequences that insulin harnessed inappropriately when it gets too high can cause like fat storage. So from the beginning, does insulin cause fat storage? The answer is, the short answer is yes. No hard stop though. Let's not stop there. Let's hope you're going to watch the video a little bit longer because insulin, all right, let's go back. Your body is going to consume food. The ironic thing is it could be protein, carbs. Food is then going to then be digested. Glucose, whether it's coming from your food or it's coming from your liver is going to go up. This prompts the beta cells in your pancreas to release insulin. Insulin is a nutrient partitioner. That's what you need to really think of it like. So it will shuttle nutrients that came from the food with the glucose into your cells so it can get into your mitochondria and then you can make ATP and make all the wonderful energy and all the things. Without insulin, things will be very, very bad, right? So <clears throat> that process begins. Well, it's not just taking nutrients into your muscle cells. It's taking nutrients into your fat cells. So it is true that yes, Insulin will stimulate fat cells to get a little bit larger and bring glucose into the cell. So yes, in that temporary period of time, this is going to matter. Window, in that period of time, you will store fat. <gasps> oh no, stop the press. Everybody stop eating carbs. Anything that can block insulin, let's take it. Well, uh -uh -uh. okay, as soon as that window happens, usually as you're eating food, eating food, insulin goes up, right? Or well, wait, first glucose goes up, insulin peaks, right? Well, interestingly enough, on the other side of that, as soon as insulin really is fully released, the fat cells do something interesting. From this response of insulin, as you'll see in this research here, this is a really good article. Um, and I, I would, I would read the whole article. We'll have the, actually the article in the description below. So you can understand the full process that insulin goes through along with leptin, your fat cells will release leptin. Well, leptin is actually the fat metabolism hormone. So there's ghrelin that you're releasing, which is like the hunger hormone. When you eat food, uh, ghrelin, your hunger starts to go down unless you eat too fast and then you can eat more. And that's why it's kind of better to chew your food and go a little bit slower uh, because it gives time for ghrelin to go down leptin to be stimulated by what? Insulin. 
So without insulin, there isn't the stimulus of leptin. And without leptin, you don't burn fat. So the truth is, while you're eating food, or you're burning fat. It's a beautiful thing when it works correctly. So leptin is now going up, while glucose should be going down because insulin is pulling it into the cell. And yes, some of your fat cells. Hey, have you ever felt like you've been getting limited or bad advice from maybe your OB or endocrinologist or one of your doctors and don't know why you feel bad and are looking for better options, particularly in the world of hormonal health? Well, I've launched our own medical endocrinology organization called Vital Med. Vital Med has the fundamental belief that we need to listen to you first and provide you with an arsenal of options to make sure that we get the best outcomes for you, but we have your interest in mind. No more just going to the doctor being shoved pills or the wrong kind of hormones or being put on the wrong protocols and then not getting the result that you want. Vital Med has a team of doctors, nurse practitioners, and nurses who really listen and have the up-to-date knowledge to give you the best options for your care with great results. Check us out, vitalmed.com. So now there's a period of time that you don't eat, right? And between that period of time that you don't eat, Leptin is fully taken over and now your body switched to fat metabolism. And actually many of you could actually see this in some of your ketone production if you ever looked at your ketones throughout the day because it's a byproduct of fat metabolism, a portion of fat metabolism, not all. We'll talk about that in another video, fatty acid oxidation versus ketone production. And, and so what now happens is those fat cells begin, can begin to shrink, right? Back to normal size and actually get smaller depending if you're in a core deficit. And, and so now fat begins to metabolize versus eating your muscle. So insulin is what stimulates fat metabolism, even though it causes fat storage at first. So that story helps you understand it. And I, I'd like to put a little cherry on top is that the argument that people make is that if insulin causes fat gain by itself, then type one diabetics who take insulin and take more of it over time should gain weight and fat, shouldn't they? Well, take a look at this article here. Again, this is a really a study. Well, it was an observational study, but it was looking at type 1 diabetics. And it was looking at taking insulin and why some people gained weight and some people didn't gain weight. What I can tell you observationally, um, as I told you, you got to look at the research and clinical evidence. You can't just look at research. You got to talk to people that actually do the thing. I've worked with thousands of type 2 diabetics and many, many type 1 diabetics. And I can tell you that the interesting thing about insulin, and as this data points out, and it gets to the, as you read on, and as this you know article points out, and what I've also seen in my clinical experience working with both bodybuilders and type 1 diabetics, that's going to make a difference here in a minute, is that the amount of insulin people use doesn't necessarily dictate fat storage. Now, it can create inflammation, and that doesn't always king fat in every single person. So what the article ended up noticing is that there are some people that insulin can stimulate more hunger, and people without adequate hunger control will consume more calories. And so now if I consume a lot more calories with my insulin, I'm then going to store more fat because there's more glucose to be pulled in, stored into those fat cells. So it wasn't the insulin that necessarily did it. And we see this all the time when I work with type 1 diabetics. They're usually not the biggest person in the room. So if they're taking insulin and sometimes they have to take more insulin, we don't necessarily see a bunch of fat gain. So insulin in and of itself, it's not going to cause a bunch of fat gain, right? Let me give you something more anecdotal, but something observational that I've seen over time. Bodybuilders and type 1 diabetics who want to be bodybuilders, they actually have a leg up on the competition to a certain degree because they can utilize insulin timing. This is the part that people don't recognize. Insulin value is more important with timing as it relates to whether you'll store fat or not. So if you were to take an overeater, Okay, someone eats a lot of food, doesn't work out that much, and they are eating pro-inflammatory foods, um, they're very stressed, uh, those people may end up having higher and higher and higher insulin levels and then consequently a larger appetite. Um, as insulin stays too high in the system for too long, now you're going to have a hard time losing fat with higher and higher insulin levels. But 
when I say higher insulin levels, I'm talking about 10 units in the blood or more fasted. Anything below that by and large isn't making you store a bunch of fat, but it can be a sign of inflammatory processes occurring inside the body. But as that insulin stays high, now you're more likely to store fat and you're also more likely to be leptin resistant, right? So we want high insulin spikes. That's why a bodybuilder will go to the gym, train really hard, just like we can do with type 1 diabetics, train really hard smash 80 grams of carbs, and then take a couple IUs of insulin to shuttle all those nutrients into the muscle right away. That creates muscle building. It releases insulin growth factors. So there's a lot of bodybuilders that use just the right amount of insulin look amazing. But wait a minute, they're adding insulin to what they already make. So shouldn't they be storing fat? That's because it's all tiny. If you have the nutrients in the nutrient load, Right as you're eating, you're, you're then being exposed to the right amount of insulin. You've got the immediate uh, benefit response. Now, if I was just adding insulin to my body all day long, I would absolutely store fat. But more importantly, what would happen first is I would become insulin resistant or insulin insensitive first. And then that would lead to glucose levels rising, which would lead to more fat storage and also uh, other metabolic effects that could lead to cardiovascular disease and aren't. That's why bodybuilders, when they use insulin, can't just keep using it forever, right? That's the same thing with type 1 diabetics. Type 1 diabetics have to use insulin, right? But if they maintain an, a, a low inflammatory diet, um, they're very food conscious, and they try to keep their insulin doses as little as possible, they will reduce the chance of disease significantly over time. But they may or may not gain fat. That's the interesting thing. You can see plenty of type 1 diabetics. I mean, I would say majority of type 1 diabetics then end up having more disease, do it underweight or at normal weight, not up, up at a high weight. So nutrient timing is everything. That's why at New Ethics Formulations, we made a semaglutide herbal-like product called GDA Max Plus that induces the body to release a significant amount of insulin right as you're eating for a short window of time. Pull those nutrients into the cell, maximize it, and then get that insulin out of it. So actually there are times that you want more insulin, right? But it's a timing thing. Many women who have poor metabolisms or can't burn fat, their insulin's too low. Their insulin will be at one, 1 1.5 or two and stay low all the time. So their insulin response is poor. I'll do another video on that in a minute. So insulin in and of itself, yes, stores fat, but it is the bringer of life by stimulating leptin and causing fat loss. Don't be confused by those influencers out there or people telling you half the story. Insulin's good for you if heart is correct. Thanks for watching the video. And if you like this content and want to see more, check out any one of the other videos we have selected right here.